Hello and welcome back to episode 35 of the Boxing Social Podcast with me, your host, Rob Tebbett. As always, just like to remind everybody to please like, comment and subscribe, turn those notifications on for more boxing content. Now that's out of the way, I am joined by brothers Sauland, Kala and Nissa here uh, ahead of Wasserman Boxing's launch of the Development Series live Thursday on Boxing Social. Kala, always a pleasure. Nice to see you. Hi, Rob. Good to be here. Good to be here. What an impressive setup you have in this studio. I know. you you Taking it to another level. You're the first person, the first guest as opposed to co-host who has appeared on the new Boxing Social podcast twice. So well done. I'm very proud of that. Two time. Nissa, how are you? (laughs) Yeah, very good. Very good. Jolly good. Right, guys, as always, uh, we're, we're kind of pressed for time a little bit. So first and foremost, let's discuss Wasserman Boxing. Um, Callow, the last time that we had you in here was, I think it was the day after the announcement. So it was very, very early on in the in the, the kind of the box it, the Wasserman Boxing journey. How are things? How are things getting on for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we, when we announced Wasserman Boxing um, and the whole deal with Team Sauerland, it was, you know, it was, it was a, obviously a big announcement. It was big for us, of course. Uh, Four generations of te- uh, four generations, four decades, four generations of exaggerating there. That's promoter talk, but uh, <laughs> four four decades of of Team Sauerland, and and you know, it took something special, and Wasserman was that special factor, and and you know, it was a big announcement, and we kept on. I think that announcement went out, and I did about three weeks worth of media interviews. Uh, literally three weeks afterwards, was still fresh interviews on the announcement. And it was it was repetitive. It was fun, but it was, you know, it was an announcement. It, but it was there wasn't something there wasn't meat on the bone yet, so to speak. And I said, judge us in six months. You know, that's I think not the whole journey, obviously, but it's the first chapter <laughs> of the journey. And I think if we look back now, you know, we obviously have had a a, a very very busy fourth quarter of the year. You know, uh, we've had Austria, we've had a uh, couple of UK shows, we've had um, obviously the development series starting now with the young guys, which I find very, very exciting. I know my, my brother's mainly worked on that, but that's that's a really exciting one. Um, obviously, you know, the whole um, Eubank Williams thing, which is massive for the UK, of course. Um, but also, you know, big events in Latvia, Germany coming up. Um you know, we've announced a string of shows in Germany, so that we've not only got next weekend in Germany, but we've got February, then we go back, I think, in April again. So, you know, if I look at it and look at the last quarter, we've done about seven or eight um, events. Uh, and if I times that over the year, using my big calculator up there, that's times four. I'd say that takes us over the 30 show a year mark, and that's where we want to be. That's um, something that we feel comfortable with. Um, don't forget, we have to go in in every market a bit different. Let's say Matchroom, we do a lot of shows all over the place, but they do more with the zone. And with us, it's always a local broadcaster. It's a local team. It's a local setup. So it's it's a lot of work. Um, and, you know, but it's fun. And it's something that we've been used to. I remember 2014 or 15, I think we had 34 shows in 17 countries, right? So from Finland to Russia to God knows where else we were, Monaco. Um, and those, that year I remember was was torturous, uh, but it was great fun, you know, and we're used to it. You know, we, I remember doing the first season of World Boxing Super Series. We did eight weekends back to yeah, back all over the planet. And people said, you're nuts. You're absolutely bonkers. And yeah, it was, but it but it worked, you know, um, and it, it, it created those big quarterfinals, setting up the semifinals. So you've got to put the work in, the, the road hours in. Um, family's never happy, but, you know, uh, you know <laughs> try and always put family first. But it, it is difficult in this game, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, but it's great fun. And I think the first six months have been a big success. Yeah, I think everybody has to be a little bit mental to work in boxing. Um, and I don't think anybody with a family in boxing keeps them entirely happy all the time. Speaking no. from my own personal no. experience no. there. No. Uh, Nissa Kall has just mentioned there about the development series, of course, live on Boxing Social in the UK and Ireland. Uh, please tune in. Uh, always got to get the plug in the, the entire Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Keep plugging. There Keep we plugging. go. Uh, but Kall has just mentioned then, of course, you've been working across the development series. It's a really great opportunity to, to see kind of the stars of tomorrow. There's more broadcasters and more promoters in boxing kind of now than ever before. And a really good opportunity for them to show what they're capable of tomorrow night yeah i, th- I think it's <clears throat> i mean it's a very exciting show and i'm ex- actually excited to see the numbers that it does you know with you guys and see um you know how many people actually 
tune in and watch it. I'm, I'm very confident on it. Um, and I think it's a, a decent show. I think the Harvey Horn fight's going to be a good one. Mm. Um, and then obviously we've got a few debutants on there as well. Uh, with uh, the big boys, Matty Harris and Hosea Burton. Um, I've got great hopes for both of them. And then Chloe, Chloe Watson, Ricky, Ricky Hatton's protege. Um, I think she's she's going to be good as well. So we got we've got a good little card, and um, it's something that we want to, you know, we want to do a few of them because I think there's so so much talent out there in the UK, especially the UK market, I, that slips through the net sometimes. And I think also coming out of COVID, uh, you need to it's sort of kickstart the market again mm. on 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 you know. For boxing, you know, of course, the big big guys, the the the, the AJs of the world, they're never gonna have to worry about a fight. But the the people who are sort of not maybe affiliated with the right promoter or um, whatever else it is, you know, they got a chance to come to these development series and and get a chance to 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 to, to box and 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 show people what they're about. Um, you know, if I if I look a few years ago, we had Zach Parker, who no one knew about, and he was you know he's a serious talent, and no one really knew about. Still, kind of don't know about now, but he was—he's you know, one of those guys, and you can find those rough diamonds. And um, I believe we've got quite a few of them on the card tomorrow night. I think if you look also at the, what we talked about a second ago about the development of Wasserman boxing, it's very clear, uh, very clear that we've you know focused a lot in the first six months on the UK. And of course, you know, first line that is Eubank Jr., um, which we were delighted that he's the the, the new face of Sky, but. Um, but behind that, you know, if you take away the, uh, you know, Fury, AJ, strip them away. And yes, then you've got Eubank, uh, you've got Gideon White. Um, but then you sort of start scratching your head a bit, don't you? You know, I mean, I think Conor Ben's making real, real waves. I think he's a much improved fighter. Um, but, you know, that there, there is that. There, there is a need for that next generation to come through. Boatsy, we could talk about that. He's also had a very good fight with Belotnik. So I thought that was a real step up fight for him. Belotnik's a tough guy, rugged. Um, he showed that in the golden contract. So, the, the, but these, we believe in this crop of fighters. Not all of them will make it, but it's not enough just to get them out on big shows. So little nights like this. Um, we're calling them boutique shows. Um, we're going to add a bit of spice to them, starting with tomorrow. I think we've got uh, the world champion beatboxer down there and a few other little things. I want to make a bit of an entertainment night. I don't think it's fair to put young kids what, on a platform and, and, and not show any. Yeah. You know, we're working with, obviously, with Bayo. the man, the beast, Bayo, um, Akin Fenwa. And, you know, th th there's going to be lots of those Wasserman sort of, you must have heard, Wasserman looks after so much mm. talent from all walks of life from Ed Sheeran to, you know, Jamie Carragher to Steven Gerrard. You know, I think we did three, three, three management transfers in one week uh, last week with uh, Steven Gerrard, um, Eddie Howe and, yeah. and Dean Smith, you know, in, in one week, you know, that shows the size of the, the corporation. Mm -hmm. So we can implement those things into these, these development series shows, boutique shows and make it a night. you want to, you don't want to get down to it's a Thursday night. Hey, you know, uh, Couple of fights, couple of drinks, bit of beatboxing, you know, nice bit of Akin Fenwa. Salt beef bagel afterwards. Yeah, yeah a little, yeah, little salt beef bagel afterwards. <laughs> Never goes amiss, you know. I'm, I'd prefer to smoke salmon cream cheese myself, there but, you, you know, each to their own. But, that's the, but that is, for us, it's very important. I'm, I'm very excited to see the, 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 the big guys, of course, you know, Harvey Horn. He's had, you know, they've all had layoffs, you know, with COVID. Like this has said, you know, it's it, the big guys, the names, you know, they're always going to get that media money. They're always going to get out. But he's like the Harvey Horns were on their way up you know they've had a, they've had, to, had to get a lot of rust off the ring in, at Wembley last month and you know this is an opportunity for him to get out quickly again and we're going to keep doing them because we, we believe in this talent and like I said not everyone will make it we're going to match them good we, people want to see good fights you know um, but also, you know, I mean, you know, we've got Harlem Eubank. He's he's not boxing tomorrow night, but he'll be on these shows as well. And on top of that, you know, I think if you look at the the the, the talent in the stable, Josh Kelly, we haven't even talked about. Chloe, but when this is a Chloe Nathan Watson on the Gorman. on the female side, mm -hmm. Nathan Gorman, fantastic, fantastic heavyweight prospect there. So very very exciting times. But it's also a lot about the future, you know. And and it's nice to sit there and, and talk about. Fury and AJ, and that's that's fantastic for boxing. 
generally but we we need these sort of shows to 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 develop the future you know and and we, you know, the other brides doing a great job of that as well it's not just us just want to talk about Harvey Horn. We had him on the podcast uh, a couple of days ago. Really engaging, bright, good talker, and obviously very good fighter. From his own admission, he's not really had the the kind of consistency in his career that he's looking for now that he believes he will get under the Wasserman boxing banner. And this a uh, real opportunity for him. And again, so he's had a, a late change of an opponent, which is never ideal, and also one that can punch a little bit. We saw what he did with Andrew Selby, who, you know, you speak to anybody in boxing, they'll tell you just how good Andrew Selby is, and yeah. he was pushed all the way. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a real test tomorrow night. I, I'm, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's a 50-50. I mm. believe Harvey should win it. I would say it's more of a 60-40. Uh, it's Harvey's to lose. Uh, but if Harvey's not on his game tomorrow night, he's he, he could be in trouble. But it's, uh, it's actually, the flyweights has always been a bit beneath our radar. But I think we first started talking about it. Um, WBSS. Yeah, we looked, yeah, we looked at it for WBSS. Well, was it flyweights? Um, but anyway, uh, we you, you got some really good fighters down mm. there, and they don't always get the the attention that they deserve because perhaps they're a little bit smaller, but they can punch a lot of them. Uh, Harvey can whack, and um, I, I I think you know there's some domestic fights to make. You know, we've got Son, Sonny Edwards, a few other guys there as well. Um, these weight categories, are, you know, always it's, I think Sonny's super flyweight. Sonny's flyweight, yeah. Flyweight. He's, he's, WB, yeah. he's got the IBF. IBF, yeah, yeah. So he's a great fighter. And they've got a bit of history between them as well. Obviously, yeah. they go back to the amateurs. Never boxed as amateurs, but always yeah. teammates and rivals yeah. as they were coming through. And I he think got, there's been a bit of needle. I would actually had Sonny Edwards message me this morning asking specifically where he was talking, where Harvey Horn was talking about him in the podcast. So okay. there is definitely some interest between the two of them. Yeah, no, no. He's very yeah. good on his Twitter as well. <laughs> and and I mean, domestic interest is 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 where it kicks careers off, yeah. doesn't it? You know, and that's that's the, the 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 launch pad. But I also think, you know, with those, especially with the lower weights, it's so important the activity. It's so important, much much in a way, much more important than the heavier weights. But we've had, you know, we've had. We're also in the WBSS, obviously with the Bantams, we had fantastic success. We've had the the fight of the year. I've the fight of my lifetime so far. Yeah, two, it, you had with, two of the fights in the, of the year. But yeah. One was in the super lights Weird, with, with the Taylor super and lights. And I'm, always, I'm almost fight. calling the super lights the big guys now. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> in, in new, but yeah, uh, when we had it, it was almost back yeah. to back, wasn't it? With uh, with with uh, Josh Taylor and and Progress, and then a few weeks later in Japan, with that with that, I mean, all time classic with uh, Anui Donaire. You know, so those lower weights they throw up feasts, and you know that's that's exciting but once again you know it's it's the activity and and you know we'll we'll find out and it's that this is ed you know it's not 50 50 it's 60 40 i'll buy that that's all right you know <laughs> you know it's uh that's 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 what those are the sort of matchups you want to see and like i said it's not everyone will make it out of this crop we know that and you know i think that it's also in the interest of the fighter to find out quicker if you're not up to it. You know, boxing is a tough business. Mm. It's a tough business, but the toughest business is for the fighters themselves. The quicker you can find out that you ain't up to it, the better you can, the quicker you get out, the better never it is. Never stay in boxing you know, too yeah. long. Yeah. Never stay in boxing too long. So it's, you know, it is sometimes you got to match them tougher to find out and for them to find out, you know, is this the career for me? And, and you know, We'll, you know, we'll be watching and we'll be matching, and, and we believe in every single one of them. But you never know, and, and you know, if we had a hundred percent hit ratio in terms of finding world champions and all those seven, eight, nine guys and girls now that we've just signed, if they all made it, you know, uh, we'd be, um, we'd be, uh, well, uh, we'd be unique, you know. <laughs> so we, we, we know that's not the case, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna stick and back them as, as far as we can. We've spoken about Harvey Horn, who's obviously headlining as a flyweight. We've mentioned briefly Hosea Stewart and Matty Harris. Um, let's talk about the heavyweights. Uh, two had them both on the same sofa. Took up quite a little bit more space than you two oh, are yeah. currently. That they found? Yeah, well, I, actually, at one point, we had all three of us on there. It was, I was, even me, I was sardined <laughs> into the middle, um, as you can imagine. But no yeah, more social distancing. No, well. COVID has been cancelled. Everybody everybody was COVID tested beforehand. <laughs> Every, all COVID regulations adhered to. Many, time. Yeah, please. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to get into trouble. Get there, yeah. But talking about the heavyweights, um, you know, real opportunity now. You've mentioned kind of AJ and Fury, but we've got oh. Dillian White, Joe Joyce, uh, Nathan Gorman, who you've mentioned there, uh, David Adelaide, obviously various different uh, stages of their career. But 
heavyweight boxing, but particularly British heavyweight boxing, is thriving. There's never been a better time to be a heavyweight and making your debut in this country. Yeah, I mean, I think generally in heavyweights, if you look at it, and I've said this quite a lot recently, I don't think that this crop of heavyweights, uh, all the way up to the top, is up there with uh, the days of, I don't know, the Lewis's and the yeah. Holyfields and, like and the, the Sizes, et cetera. And, yeah. and or, or, we, or we could go back a couple mm. of generations before that, decades before that. But what it is, is it's, it's damn entertaining, isn't it? It's damn entertaining. And if you look at the Wilder Fury fight, what a, what a shot in the arm for the whole of the sport. What a performance by Tyson. Um, not in terms of the quality of the performance, um, because I think he'd be the first to admit he made some big mistakes mm. in that fight. And, you know, he, he was, I always felt he was in control despite him being on the floor. Um, but, you know, it was a rocky script and those, that's what the sport lives off. And you look at the young guys and, you know, he talks about Hosea and, and, and Matty and, and, Look, you know, let's 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 get this right. They're both big lumps. Mm. They're both very skillful big lumps. And that is what people want to see. They want to see the big guys as well. Um and it's you know, it's so it's it's fun and you mentioned a few other names there as well coming through, you know. Obviously we're gonna have to mention El Animal at this mm. stage, Philip Hergovic, who's out on the fourth of December. Big fight for him to watch as well at the beginning of January with um, the final elim uh, the, the, the semi-final eliminator <laughs> with uh, Ortiz so they've already turned and Charles Martin. Twice, Interestingly, both of them have already turned him down, but now they're going to be forced into it. Mm. So uh, that then should that should happen probably around February March time. I'm guessing probably more March oh. time. Um, and and that yeah February might be a bit tight, but but, <laughs> but um, I'm, being, I'm just a bit impatient. But um, but you know, but you see that the you know talk, talk about Joe Joyce and etc. But that you see also the ones below that now coming through, which is it, which is going to make it damn exciting. I mean, Nathan Gorman can really go places, you know, and you know that's that's going to be a very exciting journey as well for us. Um, so it's 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 very exciting. Twenty five, isn't he? Twenty four, twenty five. And yeah. I'm, I'm I can't wait to see to see to see both Matty and Jose live tomorrow. It'd be my first time I see him live. So um, what they haven't fought before? No, I know. <laughs> I haven't I haven't even seen him in training. So you know he's more brothers and wise crack. Isn't uh, he? I, I, I hear that you've got a nickname. He, he hangs around gyms. You know I, I unfortunately have to go and uh, <laughs> find money, and he gives it out on fighters. You know, but but he is no but uh, tiny. But but when, oh, I, I, remember the nickname, I remember the yeah. first, no, I remember the first time my brother said, "Come in, you got to meet this heavyweight." And Jose is, uh, we're we're in a room, and all I see is like there's these milk sort of glass windows, and I just see this shadow <laughs> walking past the office, and I'm thinking, "What the hell? It's like the eclipse, yeah." And he walks in. I mean, they had to really open the door. I don't know how he, you know, he had to go sideways through the door. He is one big frame, one big unit. I mean, it doesn't take uh, a, 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 a physicist to work out um, that if he hits you flush, you are not getting up. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> looking forward to see him. Uh, Matt, he, you know, he, he's, he, he can, both of them can really talk, actually. And that's important as well for, for the game, you know. Especially for heavyweights. For heavyweights, yeah. you want to talk in heavyweight, you know. We've had a, we've had a, look, we, we, we promoted it with the Klitschko brothers as well. And, you know, that was, you know, they were obviously perfect sort of, you know, specimen athletes. Yeah, yeah. But let's face it, there was, you know, there was a, there was a, there was something missing as well in terms of, let's say, the the ballyhoo around the heavyweights yeah, at the time. They were just, they were just yeah. too good. Yeah, you need that, you know, you need the A B Bs, you know. You know, we worked Fury. obviously promoted David Hay, and he was a great character to to work with. But you know, the, we're hoping these guys go all that way as well and and continue our line with uh, heavyweight champs. Yeah, well, it certainly looks like it's going to be a fun ride. As I said, we had both of them in here. Both different characters, but both very interesting nonetheless. Um, so we look forward to seeing them tomorrow live on Boxing Social, Facebook and YouTube in the UK and Ireland, as well as on Fight TV internationally. Um, Nissa, I'll leave the final word with you. Um, as the man who's done all of the work in uh, preparation for the development series, um, <laughs> his words, not mine. Well, I'm just turning out. <laughs> I'm getting the popcorn out. There we go. Um, what can we expect to see tomorrow? This is your opportunity now to sell to the masses. Of course, I will be doing my part as well and pushing it out there. But what are we going to see tomorrow night live on your call? <laughs> You're going to see a feast of the, the best domestic boxers um, around. You're going to see Harvey Horn in a really great matchup 
against a very, very tough opponent. And you're going to see the future of the heavyweight division and the future female star as well. There we go. Well, we look forward to it, as Watchmen I said. unboxing. Live and exclusive in the And UK you're going to see a very Ireland. quirky show. Sorry, I had to get that last one in. Hey, we are going to see gonna, a very it's quirky it's show. The beatboxing. It's going to be a bit different. With Killer Keller. Killer, Killer, Killer Keller. Killer Keller featuring Is Killer Keller. Google him now. <laughs> That's got a Killer podcast. <laughs> you know what? We almost went with Nicky Black Market as the DJ. Really? Yeah. That's one of my favourites. But then uh, I got talked out of it. Drum and bass. Like, you know, that could, yeah. <laughs> probably, it's just for my entertainment to hear a bit of jungle, drum and bass. But uh, yeah, well, I got talked out of that one. We're looking forward to seeing some of the, the interesting things that you've got planned with the boutique boxing um, over the with. next over the course of the next 12 months. But for now, from me, Rob Tebbett, from Kala and Nissa Saul, and thanks very much for stopping by. Please don't forget to tune in to Boxing Social Live tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Get those numbers up so Nissa's nice and happy. Thanks very much for stopping by. <laughs>